السلام علیکم امید کرتی ہوں آپ سب لوگ خیریت سے ہوں گے ابھی کچھ دن پہلے سوشل میڈیا پر ایک کلپ خاصا وائرل ہوا یہ ایک پاکستانی ڈرامہ کا سین تھا جس میں ایک منگنی کی تقریب کا سیٹ دکھائی دے رہا تھا سب مہمانوں کے سامنے لڑکے نے آ کر اعلان کیا کہ وہ اس لڑکی سے اس وقت تک شادی نہیں کرے گا جب تک وہ اپنا وزن کم نہیں کر لیتی ظاہری بات ہے باقی تمام وائرل کلپس کی طرح اس پر بھی خاصی بحث ہوئی لیکن سوال یہ پیدا ہوتا ہے کہ کیا ہم سب لوگ اس چیز کا کسی نہ کسی موقع پر حصہ نہیں رہے کیا کبھی ہماری باڈی شیمنگ نہیں ہوئی یا ہم نے کسی کی باڈی شیمنگ نہیں کی اگر ہمیں کبھی لگا کہ کسی شخص کا وزن ہمارے اسٹینڈرڈس کے مطابق زیادہ ہے تو ہم نے دل ہی دل میں اس کو وزن کم کرنے کے مشورے نہیں دیے یا اگر ہمیں لگا کہ کسی شخص کا وزن ہمارے اسٹینڈرڈس کے مطابق کم ہے تو بھی ہم نے اس کو کھجور کا ملک شیک پینے کا مشورہ دیا اگر کسی کا رنگ آپ کو سامنا لگے تو کیا آپ نے کبھی بھی اس کو رنگ ہلکا کرنے کا نسخہ نہیں بتایا اگر کسی کا قد چھوٹا ہو یا کسی کا قد لمبا ہو تو کیا اسے کبھی بھی تنقید کا نشانہ نہیں بنایا گیا یہ سب وہ باتیں ہیں جو ہمارے معاشرے کا حصہ ہیں ان باتوں پر گفتگو کے لیے ہمارے ساتھ آج سبا بانو ملک موجود ہیں سبا بانو ملک ایک جرنلسٹ ہیں ریڈیو شو ہوسٹ ہیں اور کمیڈین ہیں سوشل میڈیا پر بہت ایکٹیو ہیں اور باڈی شیمنگ پر خاصی کھل کر بات کرتے ہیں تو سب سے پہلے تو سبا تھینک یو سو مچ فار بینگ اے پارٹ آف دس پوڈ کاسٹ Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Sabha, first of all, if you can tell our viewers what is body shaming? Because many people do body shaming from us, and do it too. But we don't know how to do this term. So body shaming is kind of a blanket term, which refers to the sort of degradation and humiliation of someone over their body composition. <laughs> so like your vazan, it can be skin color, it can be acne, whatever have you. Um, but it kind of, and then if you go beyond that, uh, body shaming and, you know, particularly fat shaming um, goes into the way people perceive someone who looks different and how that can impact the way if they're hired for jobs, if they're treated medically uh, with respect. Um, and it's basic and very much so the most basic thing yeah, the basic thing of body shaming is bullying uh, based, bullying someone based on their body and I think Pakistan and Mari culture man there's this attitude that like it's just a joke da, da, da. but it's a degradation I mean when you tell someone that something's by the way you're fat or you know by the way you're dark or by the way you should fix this you're never saying it as like oh good for you it's always there's something wrong with you and this needs to be fixed so my rambling answer is yeah uh, okay ye aapne jo ye baat batayi ke body shaming zyada tar fat shaming hoti hai ke agar aap kisi ko یہ کہہ رہے ہو کہ نہیں بھائی ہم نے تو بس بائی دا وے کہا ہے لیکن بیسیکلی آپ کسی اچھی سینس میں نہیں کہہ رہے ہوتے آپ اس شخص کا مذاق ہی اڑا رہے ہوتے ہیں سب اب ہم آتے ہیں اپنے اگلے کوشچن کی طرف وہ یہ ہے کہ باڈی شیمنگ زیادہ تر کس بات پہ کی جاتی ہے یو آلریڈی مینشن فیٹ شیمنگ وٹ وٹ آر ادر تھنگس آن وچ پیپل آر باڈی شیم ریڈیکولڈ فار ون ریزن اور دی ادر آئی تھنک لائک جو چیز ڈزن link up with what is considered traditionally attractive, right? So like, let's look at our culture, for example. Now we know if you have dark skin and dark skin basically means any skin <laughs> that is not fair skin. So for example, it, like I'm not, you know, I'm pretty average. I think if you see, look around, you'll see many Pakistanis and me have the same skin color, very average, middle of the line. But in my family, I'm one of the darkest people. So it's, it's really like, if you don't match with that, I would say skin color is very big. I would say acne, people whose skin, um, you know, they have acne, blemishes, blackheads, height gets made fun of. I know there's people, um, but I would say, yeah, the most common though, most, most common would be not being thin. So anything that conforms out of that, I would say is probably the most common. Um, Sapa, um, you've clearly mentioned how difficult it is for people who do not fit the standards of the society to become a mainstream part of the society. So uh, now coming to my next question, which is, um, 
बॉडी शेमिंग क्या सिर्फ एडल्ट की होती है या बच्चों की भी होती है क्या लोग इस बात का एहसास करते हैं कि बच्चे को नहीं कहना और सिर्फ बड़े को कहना है आई थिंक बचपन में शुरू होता है राइट लाइक सून इज यू लुक एट अटल केयर एंड लाइक गोलू मोलू हैज इट्स रन टाइम राइट टू वेंचुअली हिट एन एज वेर इट्स लाइक नो दिस इज एन ओके एंड आई थिंक दैट आर यू नो द वे इट इज इज दैट वन एडल्ट्स आर टेलिंग यू एंड सिग्नलिंग टू यू दैट बीइंग फैट इज बैड बीइंग डार्क इज बैड बीइंग दिस इज नॉट कंसीडर्ड अट्रैक्टिव you as a child are going to do that to other children and you know like and i i mean it goes from everyone i've seen teachers do it i've seen when i was 9 years old an air um air stewardess on pia body shamed me at age 9 she told me i shouldn't be eating dinner you know so it's it's really much i don't think anyone has lehas of who they're talking to because fatness or Uh, not being attractive in the way that we say is attractive is seen as a failure so it's seen as something which is free game to comment on no matter what the age is um seva um uh, you already mentioned about this uh, person incident where there was this air hostess who body shamed you when you were just 9 um if it's okay with you would you be um open to talk about body shaming that you faced as a child and also after growing up oh yeah yeah i'm totally cool with it uh so firstly i would say like i have one sister she is 58 like pulled straight out so i always describe it it's like we're both like amazons but on different ends of the spectrum <laughs> uh so my whole life that comparison has been there's like what what are you like why can't you be like her i mean i'll give you an incident just about 2 years ago our laser lady uh was quite uh, upset of like almost frustrated with me and was like look at your sister why can't you do what she does work out like she does and i mean i blasted her because i'll say like i ha- i've reached a point now where if someone comments on my weight like it is the most base thing you can say um but that's happened um quite a bit i'm sorry <clears throat> excuse me uh, other things that have happened now i'm like just trying to think but my whole life like even partners uh back in the day i remember the first person that i you know had developed a close friendship with would mm-hmm. always compare me to my friends and ask me why i didn't dress like them when they were significantly smaller i had teachers be like, you know kind of describe me as like big hulk this happened before i've had aunts in my own family introduce me to people as the fat one. Um and then I would say the worst parts though are when it happens at work. Like because now you've crossed a boundary and I find uh there was one time at work that a chair had broken. Mostly because my work was really cheap and didn't buy good chairs and someone had broken a chair and somebody else this man who I had like a great working relationship up until that point you know we even jokingly be like work husband work wife sort of situation said oh did sava sit on it you know and like i'm a, at that point i was like 27 28 year old professional in fact i was in charge of this person in many ways and it was just very degrading like but uh, just to point out i was born 11 pounds okay <laughs> like born 11 <laughs> so that means my entire life I've been questioned by peers how much do you weigh well how much do you weigh I've had people say to me like well why do you dress like this why do you do this why can't you be different like what's the problem just go on a diet so many people whether I know them or I don't like love to tell me what I should and shouldn't eat and shouldn't and shouldn't wear um but I'm just so into myself <laughs> it's kind of don't let it get to me but yeah sorry I mean that's a very long winded answer I should warn you I do talk very long winded so this is what we want actually you want to speak your heart out um so um saba while you were growing up now that you're an adult adult and you can like you know you can reflect you can rationalize and there's so many things that like you know you you're a mature person now but when you were a kid did it impact your psychology oh yeah it really did because i would say there's something wrong with me because you know um i 
I grew up in the house. It's not like I was eating a separate meal. <laughs> you know, I ate the exact same food as my sister and my mother, you know, she's also a bigger person, a plus size woman, but she never like said this sort of stuff. She never was like, I'm ugly, my way, da, da, da. like it wasn't a thing. But I would say from my father, it was like a huge thing. And like, Masha, like he's like almost 70, works, you know, works out two hours a day, watches everything he eats. But all of us eat the same food. And the point I'm trying to make is, is like, so in my home, like I wasn't a failure and like I was built up and I do attribute that a lot with how I'm confident today. Um, but then out of the house, it was always like I was the other. I was always the fat friend. I was always the one that was sort of like taking up too much space. And I think, and but I think the balance of that and kind of always being, one thing that people really don't talk about, I mean, we talk about it in sense of girls that they get adultified. Uh, the phrase adultified means as we, in Pakistan, like you're born a girl, you're already a woman. Like you're already an adult woman and you are expected to behave as such and you don't get to be a kid. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're a fat girl, you look older to people because you're bigger. And I think that that psychology on me is like, I don't feel like I got to be a kid for as long as I should have. Like when I look like I've had these conversations with my parents, but you know, when you're larger and your body develops, I have PCOS, also polycystic ovarian syndrome. So I developed much sooner than like the average girl. And I feel that I was sort of contained much younger um, from being a child and sort of forced to grow up in a way, which now I'm like dealing with in therapy because I'm like, why couldn't I have been a kid for longer? Um, but yeah, th those sort of things. And you start thinking like, I'm really ugly. And you conflate weight with a beauty. And I think I accepted a lot of bad behavior from adults, from friends, from partners, because I assumed, well, you're a fat person, you should just be grateful anyone's looking at you. You know, like that gets really ingrained in you from a young age that you can be the exception if you just adhere to certain <laughs> rules and things because, hey, you're fat. So you're never going to be like a hot girl or an attractive person. Yeah. Uh, so, Sabab ke kehne ka matlab ye hai ke agar aapke saath, aapki body shaming hoti hai, to aapka self-confidence itna niche chala jata hai ke aapko lagta hai ke agar aapko log bure tarikhe se bhi treat kar rahe hai, to koi baat nahi, kyunke aap yehi deserve karte hai, aapki self-worth bohat kam ho jati hai. Uh, ab hum aati hai gender ki taraf, which is a very important point when it comes to body shaming. Kya aapko lagta hai ke gender ka body shaming se koi taluk hai? Yes, I mean, because orto ka kami hota hai khubsurat hona, right? Like that's how we're treated. That literally, our job is to be like attractive potential mates to someone else. And I'll tell you, my weight has been used as a point of concern by most of my family members that I won't be able to get married. You know, like this is the thing, like I, and this has never been said <laughs> to fat males mm -hmm. in my family. That being said, I know men, boys do face body shaming. It's not fair to say they don't, but I think that to be traditionally attractive is something that if a woman fails at, it is almost a moral failing on her part. She didn't try hard enough. She's not doing what she needs to do. Um, and I think that women's bodies and unfortunately girls' bodies, girl meaning children, <laughs> okay, are held to a standard, they're objectified, they are literally viewed as objects. And it is viewed as something which is for uh, public consumption. People are allowed, to, are not only allowed to look at it, but encouraged to and encouraged to judge it. Um, and these are horrifying messages. Like when you think that you're telling a nine-year-old or 10 year old that if you don't lose weight, you won't get married. You know, as if that's it, like you're nine or 10. It's not that, you know, if you don't study, you won't do this. If you don't work hard, you won't do this. It's that if you don't conform now, you're gonna have a much harder time later landing a man who, you know, whatever they look like is fine because they're a man. So that you're just lucky you got picked. Yeah, it is gendered in, in many ways. Uh, so um, this concept of uh, marriage is, really important when it comes to body shaming because girls are told this thing that if they 
एक अगर उनका ये वजन नहीं होगा तो उनके रिश्ते भी रिजेक्ट हो जाएंगे उनसे कोई शादी नहीं करेगा फिर उनको किसी से भी शादी अगर वो करती हैं तो उसका बहुत एहसान है कि उसने उनके साथ शादी कर ली I mean you always hear like if a bride is you know a bigger body person that's the talk of the shadi that like oh she's a fat bride oh my god i kill myself if i look like that whatever and also an added layer is is my mother has heard many comments that like if you don't lose weight then people who come to see your daughters are going to be like well that's what she's going to end up like so i don't want to marry her which is like an insane horrible thing to say to someone thankfully my mom's like you know <laughs> well I'm like I don't care but um I've heard this growing up so yeah uh Saba you um I think uh, you've been really fortunate this way that you had a mother who was supportive and who did not give in to what people had to say or um mere khayal mein maon ka bahut bada kirdar hota hai silsile mein ki wo bachon ki psychology ko kis tarah build karti hain jab maon ki apni self esteem achhi ho to hi bachon ki bhi self esteem achhi hoti hai सभा अभी कुछ दिन से एक वीडियो क्लिप बहुत वायरल हुआ हुआ है ये वीडियो क्लिप है एक टेलीविजन ड्रामा का जिसके बारे में हम इस पॉडकास्ट के शुरू में भी बात कर चुके हैं वो ड्रामा जिसका नाम ही ओए मोती है यानी ड्रामा का नाम ही फैक्ट शेमिंग पर है उसी तरफ हम ये देखते हैं कि इंडिया में सभ्य साक्षी हु वेरी फेमस डिजाइनर डज अ कैम्पेन विद प्लस साइज मॉडल्स तो आपको क्या लगता है कि पाकिस्तान और इंडिया में ये डिफरेंस है थोड़ा सा बॉडी शेमिंग का क्या इंडिया में कम होती है पाकिस्तान में ज्यादा होती है या उनका मेन स्ट्रीम मीडिया और वहां पर लोग अब इस चीज को रियलाइज करना शुरू हो गए हैं लेकिन हम अभी भी वहीं पर हैं आई वुडेंट से like helped launch uh, more i don't want to give him credit for them but a couple plus size models from india um i would think going back a few years now um who have then gone and like appeared um other places so that's pretty cool but pakistan also like i would say generation for many years now has been tackling body shaming in a way um that's not just like okay let's put a fat girl on screen too which i think is the mistake that some brands do make is like okay we got one uh generations like no let's have every body size which is actually what we should push towards but point being is i don't think it's gotten better in either place because if you look at mainstream bollywood for example you're never going to see a somewhat average let alone a fat actress True. on screen you know like vidya balan who is amazing incredible actor her weight has fluctuated over the years and like it's always like how does it feel being like the one fat one you know like it, it's such a thing and it's like if maybe if she wasn't such an incredible actor and honestly she wasn't married to someone who runs a production house that would have been happy this is me revealing my like extensive knowledge of bollywood insidership i'll tell you um but in pakistan um so for this drama for example so I also reacted to it quite like whichever way this ends up it's going to be an annoying ending. Um I've been seeing people coming to its defense though. Like I I actually sent you an article a bit ago that it was like that's not that the point is trying to show that body shaming and fat shaming is unfair and you know it happens quite a lot to young women in Pakistan in this scenario, right? Of like marriage. Now the thing though is okay, maybe you're trying to put out a narrative that like this is wrong why is the song the show called oi modi okay like if not for already making fun of the situation right and number 2 if you hear hear the theme song it's literally someone like belting out a ballad of oi modi um which i think just kind of goes to show that maybe any for me personally like as a fat woman in Pakistan who absorbs this media any effort you're really trying to show of what fat women go through sort of got reduced to zero because you're liter like that song that title like what that's a joke like to me that's ridiculous like and i don't need people singing that to me on the street when i'm walking and trying to live my life and um baymasal who is a body activist here in Pakistan quite popular over on Instagram 
She put up a post that was like, okay, cool. You want to go ahead and make the show. Now you tell us, be transparent, how many fat women were in the writing room of the show? How many fat people, beyond just women, people were in production, were in the director's chair, were in the, like, how, whose opinion did you get from the fat community about like this being the way to do things? Because that's really important. Like you don't get a medal for, oh, speaking up for fat people if there's no fat people involved or right? because we even, I even sort of felt like, okay, well, how many fat people are on the cast? I don't know if this is making sense, but you know what I mean? Like if I was tomorrow going to make a movie about like, say, something in Rawalpindi, like something very dear to like Punjabi culture. And I'm like, by the way, there's no Punjabi people in it or on the cast or in the background. Like, that's not fair. Not that Punjab is like underrepresented. I think I just picked the worst ethnic group I could have to make that statement. But yeah, I don't think, long story short, I don't think either country, either media honestly gets like, Yay, because I mean, I think it's great that Sabia Sachi is a high end uh, designer who's doing this because he is possibly the most well known high end designer from India and the subcontinent, actually, yeah. at large, I would say. Um, ours have not in that realm, but I would say our high street has been sort of moving in that direction. I don't know about India's high street, to be honest. They might have already been doing this. Uh, but overall, I still think like it's a no. Uh, and very similar to Hollywood, like I wouldn't really give any big media credit. Like a fat person is still like a, you're welcome. You know, like you're welcome. We did it. Like we gave you what you wanted, just one. And I don't know, to me, it's like, eh, not enough. <laughs> yeah, it can also be performative at times. That is just like, you know, the way you have people of, people of color um, in the West on uh, different platforms, but they're there just to show that representation of people of color and uh, probably they can never be a part of the mainstream the way rest of the people are. Well, I'll just say like, I went, I, I'm one of those American Pakistanis who like, my life was either US or Pakistan, I'd never been anywhere else. So the first time I went to the UK for work, I turned on the TV and I could not believe that there was a there was some commercial about an insurance company. And the family on screen was like a Desi family. Mm -hmm. And there was no like accent. There was no explanation for how they got here. Nothing, nothing I'd ever seen in the States. If there's a brown person on screen, you best believe you're gonna play an immigrant. You're gonna play a stereotype. But in the UK, it's like, there's just, if you watch any of their shows, there's just brown people everywhere. And by brown, I mean like South Asian. Um, and I was, to me, that sort of representation is monumental because you're accepting that like we're just there and it's not like a focal point. So yeah, this, it, the performativeness of it is like, when we do that here, we have to make a whole show about it. And we have to let you know that show is literally about her body weight, right? Mm -hmm. True, but it um, uh, actually reminds me of an interview that I watched of Asia Spy Hassan Shahjar Yasin a few years ago, probably eight or nine. Um, in the show, mein Hassan Shahjar Yasin said that your clothes are for a specific body type. Ke liye hai. Because like, you know, they, they did not even have uh, bigger sizes back then. And Hassan Shahjar Yasin replied to that on national television, if you have worn my clothes, then you exercise kare because when you look good, you feel good. So I will not make clothes for any other size. So this, and now because body shaming has become a part of the discussion, it is being discussed internationally. So it's also now like, you know, um, they would be probably out of the game if they talk something like this on national television now. But yeah. this is a mindset which has been ruling the fashion industry around the world. So um, about the after question itself, or uh, because I know you woke up pretty early on a Saturday morning to be on this podcast. Saturday, so this was great. <laughs> okay. So um Akhi Sawal Sawal Saba, you have been fortunate you had a mother who did not put you down, uh, who never discriminated you. Uh, 
सपोर्टिव पेरेंट्स नहीं है उनके पेरेंट्स के अपने पीटीएसटी चल रहे हैं उनके पेरेंट्स के अपने कोई इश्यूज हैं उन पेरेंट्स के अपने सेल्फ स्टीम का प्रॉब्लम इतना ज्यादा है कि बच्चे को वो क्या हेल्प करेंगे और सोसाइटी तो जितनी बड़ी बुली है वो तो है ही उन लोगों को क्या करना चाहिए Honestly, I get asked this question a lot, like how to get confident? How are you confident? How are you confident? The truth is is that we are in a unique part of time where we have more control over what we consume than we've ever had before, right? Like if like for example, no one's watching TV. Right? I feel like anymore like you get even my mom is watching dramas on YouTube. She's like I watch them on YouTube. But one thing that helped me personally is I got when I had Instagram. I realized I was following white Caucasian frail thin women as like my fashion icon. And then I stopped. I started moving over. I started learning more. I started realizing more doing my own research. What are beauty standards and how did they come to be? Why do we hate fat people? Like I really just went in and I researched and I looked it up. But the thing is is that it is an incredibly lonely uh journey. It's a lonely place to be when you feel like everyone thinks you're ugly. <laughs> everyone thinks your body is a problem. You're being told this all the time. And the most cliché answer I have to give is you got to work up to the point where you stop caring. Um it helps to get older like I am I'm in my 30s now. It helps to you know do the research it helps to i mean i'm not going to lie like i think i'm really good looking like <laughs> i like my face i like my body like it helps to get to this point but it's not easy because it sounds really corny and it sounds cliche and it sounds like i'm you know like when people are like how do you get good skin oh drink water and you want to just like throw water in their face because that's not true <laughs> that's not the only way it happens so to get confidence or to get more okay You know like I don't even really support body positivity. I think if you're positive about your body, that's awesome. But I think also look at your body for what it does for you, right? Like, you know, there's gratefulness in the fact that you can do certain things or that it's carrying everything inside of you and letting you go forward. Don't make your body, don't make your face, don't make your skin color anything, everything that you are. You know like it's that's not it and like there's no ugly person on earth they're just the same. so the basic gist of my point is is like if you spend your whole life trying to adhere to these standards trying to even you know it, you'll never win and the people who are saying all this crap honestly crap to you they are themselves insecure they are themselves self-hating and you will always notice that comments like this come when they see you're already down or when they see you're up because their sole purpose is to drag you further down like that's all it is they cannot stomach it and i wish i could like go and sit with like every fat kid and be like listen <laughs> it's going to be okay and this and that and i know what i'm saying sounds very like sugary sappy sweet but ultimately like anyone i know whether they're fat whether they're extremely thin whether they're dark whatever whoever has a body has issues with their body but it's also just kind of moving beyond that and kind of seeing that you know what like i can do things i can think like i'm a person and this i wish i could say bad words but this stuff <laughs> that is coming out of other people does not have to define me and rule me and i would really say like just do your research when you look into why we think certain things are attractive you start feeling stupid and you start thinking other people <laughs> are really stupid for thinking that way like i'll tell you like if somebody comments and tells me i'm ugly i can and by the way it happens a lot because i model also so like it happens a lot and i'm just like all right cool like i think you're dumb <laughs> and this one you got to like train yourself to think this way because it is true like what we pakistanis for example believe light hair light eyes light skin is beautiful we are south asian <laughs> like we come from a country of gorgeous black hair and chocolate brown eyes and i'm not saying pakistanis look like, oh, i don't exist who have those features but yeah, the but vast majority of us you know we get we look like we look and we're beautiful people stunning people 
inside, outside, we're funny as hell. And I think that that's what you got to think though, that isn't it strange <laughs> that we think what's most beautiful is white and whites look past thing. Like if you look like a white person, it's like you're the most beautiful person in the room and we should be embarrassed by that. And this is my mentality. Like I really do feel this way. It's not that I'm just saying it now to be funny. Like I genuinely think that when somebody sees like a dark skinned, bigger woman who is so hot or beautiful, whatever, standing there and they're like, ugh, I'm like, you're the dumb one. <laughs> like, what is it that you're looking at? So anyways, this is very, again, very long winded. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that we have been very much conditioned by media to think one way. Okay. As someone who works in media, I can tell y'all, like it is like a scam. Your parents, your grandparents, the people around you who make comments, they are also within this scam. They've also been told their whole lives something's way needs to be. You just got to break out of it. You get, educate yourself, find like-minded people. Oh, sorry. The last thing I'm going to say is, is we cannot control our family and the impact that comes from within the four walls we're in, but we control who we meet outside. And if you're friends with anyone or partners with anyone who puts you down in regards to these things, or you feel worse when you walk away from the situation and they attack your body, I beg you, <laughs> cut ties with these people. Because if anyone's making you feel bad about something you literally cannot control, they're not worth it. And that is my long answer to how you can get over it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sava. I think the way you summed it up is so inspirational that obviously uh, we can't do anything about the families we're born into, but we can definitely control people we're being friends with, like control ourselves not to be friends with people who put uh, us down or people like, you know, bring negative vibes and negative energy to our lives. So thank you so much, Sava. Thank you so much for being a part of this podcast. And I hope... Um, your words have given a whole new perspective to people who have probably been experiencing body shaming or the ones who have been body shaming others. So thank you so much for this. Thank you for such an enlightening conversation. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Oh, no. Congratulate you again on the one. Ji, I'll tell you something about Sava with and I realized that Aaj is uh, channel ko bane pura ek saal ho chuka hai and Saba is my anniversary guest basically. So I'm uh, really happy and excited for that too. Finally, ek saal pura ho gaya. Lag nahi raata pura ho ga, but ho gaya ek saal pura. Thank you so much, Saba. And uh, aap sab loon ka bhi bahut shukriya jinhoon is channel ko support kiya, uh, jo pehle vlogs dekhte rahe, ab podcasts dekhte hai, bohat se un mozaat per bhi podcasts hoti hai, jo galiban zara... Uh, हमारे हमें झंझोड़ते हैं हमें जरा तंग करते हैं लेकिन आप लोगों ने वो पॉडकास्ट देखी आप लोगों ने अपने कमेंट्स दिए आप लोगों ने अपना फीडबैक दिया आई एम रियली ग्रेटफुल टू यू फॉर दैट अगली दफा आपसे मुलाकात होगी दोबारा किसी पॉडकास्ट में तब तक के लिए खुदा हाफिज़